Yesterday morning, I brought the pieces of the dining room table into our dining room and assembled everything, squared it up, and bolted it together. And then I screwed the two tabletops, the two halves, onto the top of the slides. So here you get a good look at how the table slides work. They use, they use pulleys and cables, and you just pull one side out, and it activates the other side. And it opens and closes nicely. A side shot here of how I put a uh, stationary apron in the middle to help hide the table slide, and then I added a smaller piece of apron that was screwed underneath the tabletop that moves along with the top to help hide the slides. I left a little section in the middle to store the two 18-inch leaves. They can lay down right on top of those uh, one-inch thick supports in the middle, and then the tops close over them. Here's a good look at the chairs for the first time. We bought these chairs up at the Thomas Mosier Company in Auburn, Maine. Uh, you can take a look at them. They're just beautiful work. They're made from cherry and ash. And I tried to incorporate some ash features like that ash dovetail key into the design, as well as some pieces in the pedestals. I took a look at my pictures and realized that the dates uh, on the pictures, I had started this project on January 27th, and I finished it up on March the 26th, so it took just about a couple of months, and I thought I'd add some shots of the work I did along the way. Here's my number seven jointer plane, putting a square and true edge on the board so I could glue them up edge to edge. And then once I had the top all glued, I used the same jointer plane to flatten the top. And once I had it roughed out with the jointer, I used my Lee Nielsen bevel up smoothing plane to help smooth it off. This was a little bit tricky. I had to run a dovetail groove in each end of the table to accept the ash dovetail key that helped fasten the breadboard on the end. And just a detail here of what the ash key looks like before I came along with my track saw and made a slice down each side and uh, trimmed it up. That ash dovetail key was a fair amount of work, but I really like the way it looks on the table. Once the top was constructed, I turned to my finishing tools. I used my sander to sand everything down, and then my router to put a round over edge on the, all the way around the top. I was a little nervous about cutting the top in half, but it all worked out well. Uh, I was happy there were no mistakes. Use my domino cutter to uh, construct a couple elements of the table. This shot is uh, cutting some dominoes to hold the aprons on the tables, the aprons that hide the slides. And this is just it's installing some uh, furniture nuts to make the table so I can knock it down and move it easily. For the finish, I use an Osmo product called Poly X. It's derived from vegetable oils and natural waxes and takes a fair amount of energy to rub on. I used a uh, application pad to rub it on and uh, it seemed to work out well. It made a nice finish. Just a note here, if you know anything about working with cherry, cherry after you plane it and sand it has kind of a pinkish tone to it, which will darken up over time. So I chose not to do anything about coloring the cherry. I didn't stain it or anything, but I'll just let it uh, darken up with the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So once you get all that Osmo rubbed on, you try to put it on as sparingly as you can. I took a microfiber towel and uh, the instructions call for you to wipe it wipe all the excess off and it, it's a little bit sticky I have to put in some effort to get it all off but you can look in this clip and you can see that uh, once you start to rub it you get kind of a nice satin finish to it I used a the same piece of uh, applicator pad on my sander to buff everything off and I'm happy with the ta the way the table came out. I think it matches the chairs nicely, and looking forward to using it.